right, welcome back my most amazing artists. You have finished drawing your birds on a wire. You've also traced it with an ultra fine point black Sharpie. And now we're ready for watercolor. So I'll give you a little quick demonstration on how to use your watercolors. I have several brushes in here, but we're going to use a smaller round brush for this project. Um, obviously wet right now. I don't need these two, so I'm just going to get these out of the way right now. When you first get started on your tray, water container, dirty side, clean side, paper towel always stays on the tray. And then your watercolors. These are dry right now, though they look a little wet. They're not. Um, so you need to add just a drop of water or two to each of the colors that we're going to be using. If you want a black or a brown bird, I would suggest not using black because it's going to be too dark and you won't be able to see your black Sharpie lines anymore. If you paint black over top of this, then you're not gonna see it. So I would stay away from black. Brown is okay though. I prefer colorful birds. You don't have to. Before we get to actually painting with our watercolors, I want to remind you, oops, I just stuck my finger in it, that when you are painting your birds or any watercolor project, I'm just going to use this scrap really quick here to demonstrate, you are to dip in, kind of get that water activating the color, only using paint on the tip of your paintbrush, and then getting a nice light color. It should not be thick and dark. If I really scrape down in there and I don't wipe my paintbrush off on the edge, I can end up with a much darker color. You want the lighter version, not the darker one. If you get a dark one, you can just spread it out, make it go as far as you can. And I'm not scrubbing the paper with my paintbrush. It's not like this. It's just with the tip. That way I don't ruin the paintbrush. You can always go back into your water container and add more water to that and spread it out even more so that it is lighter like the first one, okay? So before we get started, make sure that you remember, rinse the paintbrush off, wipe, no tapping, because then you fling water all over your neighbors and their artwork and that makes them sad. Make sure your paintbrush is clean by checking it on the paper towel. If it is, then you can go ahead and choose your next color. If not, Rinse again, wipe again, and then move on. Now that we have that out of the way, I'm just gonna scooch these out of your view. I wanted to use a white oil pastel and I forgot to put the white oil pastel on. I'm just gonna add some little highlights. Now, white on white is hard to see. I'm just gonna add some highlights to the bird's eyes, maybe a little bit to the tail just making a simple little line on their beaks and on their tails. Nothing too special, a few quick little lines, maybe even the top of their heads. And that's it. So we're on to painting. If you choose not to use oil pastel, it's totally fine completely optional. All right, I'm dipping in the water. I'm going to start out with a red bird over here. Now, since we have added our details already with our Sharpies, we have to be super careful not to get red into our eyes or whatever color we're choosing to use. The good thing about using watercolor paper is it will absorb into the paper really quickly. So you can kind of spread this around. I've got a lot of color on here. I'm just going to kind of move it over so that my bird has color on both sides pretty evenly. Maybe even a little bit more color over here. The good thing is you can go right over where you added oil pastel and over top of your black Sharpie lines. 
No need to paint around them because they still show up because they're so much darker than our watercolor. Just need a little more water in my red to finish out in between his eyes here. Go very slowly and carefully. Hopefully you drew your birds large enough that painting them in isn't too difficult. And there you have it, bird number one done. I'm gonna finish this really quickly with a couple other colors. I'm actually gonna show you on this one. I'm gonna go ahead and add green and I'm gonna kind of fade my green bird. Lots of water here. I'm gonna add, clean my brush out, show you how you can mix colors right on your paper. I'm gonna take blue and I'm gonna add it right into my green so that my bird has two colors. He's a blue-green bird. And these will kind of puddle and mix together, but that's what I'm going for this time. Usually we don't want our colors mixing that much, but this time I do, because I wanted to mix the colors right on my paper. I'm just gonna go down here Paint his tail in. And then, since I mix colors on my paper, I'm gonna go ahead and clean my brush out, make his head a little more blue. It's kind of fun seeing where you put that white oil pastel too. It doesn't always seem like you remember where you put it. This is a little too much of a puddle for me. So I'm gonna dab some of it up and just put it on his head. And some of it down here on his tail. If you don't like that look, dry your paintbrush off on your paper towel and just soak it up. Dry your paintbrush off on the paper towel. Continue soaking that color up until you get back to the color you're looking for. I think the last bird is going to be a little orange. All right, there you have it. You're done painting the birds. The best part about this is we still have to do the beaks. Your beaks could really be any color. I'm gonna do this guy's orange. It's really important you only use the tip of your paintbrush for this, so you keep it right inside of your bird's beak, especially when the watercolor's wet, because it could bleed out. Try and make this one as dark as I can over here because he's an orange bird anyway. The fun part is using a big round watercolor brush, if you have to do this in the next class, that's totally fine, is adding a fun background to this. I think I'm gonna just really get my purple wet, 
kind of load up my paintbrush, but mostly with water and make the sky a purple color. If you're feeling adventurous and maybe you want to make this more of a wintry scene, you could take oil pastel and put it on the wire like so. I'm going to try and do it over top. Don't do that. Try and do it first. <laughs> um, maybe even add some snowflakes. The hard part about this is, again, you're working with white oil pastel on a white paper, so it becomes very hard to see where your snowflakes are until you paint over it. This is optional. If you don't want your birds to be in a snowy scene, you don't have to. You can make your snowflakes simple. I'm going to draw this on another piece of paper so you can see what I'm doing really quick. You can make a simple snowflake like so by drawing a plus sign and then putting a smaller X through the middle. Or you can make them more detailed by adding little V's on every other line. You could do even every line if you wanted to to make it really fancy, but it's harder with an oil pastel than it is with a Sharpie or a pencil because you can see where this is going and that is such a thicker tip than my Sharpie line would be. So I'd have to draw them really big. I think I'm going to add just a couple arrows here. You could even use a blue oil pastel for this so that it's easier for the kids to see while they're working. All right, let's see what I did here. Ooh, that's really dark. Okay, sometimes this happens where we end up with a really dark purple. Just dip your paintbrush back into your water container and come right back to your paper and spread that color out. You want it to be light like I had on the left, not dark like I have it right now. So I got too much color, not enough water. So I'm just gonna spread that color around. I'm only adding water to my paintbrush right now because I don't need any more color. There's plenty on my paper to use. Be careful going around the details of your birds. Any color in the background will work. You can make it blue, you can make it yellow. If you want to add a couple of colors, that's totally fine. Whatever makes you happy. Oops, I dripped on my bird's eye. I'm just gonna wipe it up, blot my finger off on the paper towel. It's the hard thing about using a really wet paintbrush is not to drip anywhere or get it into places you don't really want it. not gone back into the purple since I made this big purpley mess over here. I'm just spreading that color around my page. And it's okay if it's a variation of colors or lighter purples versus darker purples because of where and how much color you got in that spot. Don't be afraid to go back and kind of pick up some of that color and then come over to a new space and use it. All right, there you have it. Your finished masterpiece. Place these on the drying rack or in a safe place where they can lay flat and dry, especially if you were mixing colors on your birds so they have a chance to dry out. There you go. I hope you had a wonderful time.